You're listening to The Broken Meeple Show, a podcast that speaks passionately about board games for the benefit of those who play them. My name's Luke Hector, best known for The Broken Meeple YouTube channel, and I'm an everyday gamer just like you. And I'll be talking about reviews, top tens, and just about anything that connects me to board games. As long as I have a tea or coffee in hand, that is. So grab a cup, relax, and enjoy. And remember, it's only a game. Hi everybody, Luke Hector here. I think this is, what, Podcast 90, I believe? I probably should have checked that before I logged on. Yeah, it's Podcast 90. So yeah, 90 episodes of this uh, Broken Meeple Show format. And I'm going to tilt the camera down a little bit. That's better. Anyway, yes, this is Podcast 90. And this is basically recorded on 31st of March 24. We're almost into April, which is... Certainly a, a step up from March. March is not one of my favorite months because, you know, as much as the start of spring is not too hot, we're now starting to see the temperatures rise in the UK and it's not going to be long before suddenly I'm going to be sweltering at home and, like, you know, struggling to do with it. And I just, I much prefer, you know what, can I just go back to Iceland in February where it was minus 10? I think I'm more suited to those sort of temperatures, honestly. But... It's going to start getting warmer, but March is horrible for me because it's, as a tax accountant, it sucks. And I'm not even a personal tax accountant, I'm a corporate accountant, which is company related, but so many companies have March year ends, and I had loads of like, you know, I, I, I'm not going to bore you with technical tax details, but let's face it, if you've heard the words research and development in the UK, and you deal with that as a company, trust me, it is hell on toast, and I had so many, you know, I had all my stuff on my portfolio. Nicely sorted, weeks in advance. And then some last minute stuff came in from clients and it's like, oh great. And they caused me to have pretty much a brain aneurysm and a heart attack by the time the week was over. Thankfully, they got sorted, but not without a certain degree of stress and you know anxiety and everything. So it was not good the last week of March. Thankfully, it's done. And I'm on holiday for a bit now, so I don't go back to work until the 8th, and be, that is mainly because I'm going away with the family to the Peak District tomorrow, and that's because it's my birthday. Yes, I don't usually make a big deal about my birthday, and this is probably no exception really, but, you know, it's my birthday this week on Thursday, and it's my 40th. So, you know, I, I kid, people are sort of asking me, what do you want to do for your 40th, Luke? It's a big time, and I'm just like... Whatever. I don't know. I don't really celebrate birthdays as big as I used to. Uh, you know, I mean, all it is is just a reminder you're getting older and my body's falling apart and my mind is dissolving. I don't know if I want to be reminded about that every year. But as for the midlife crisis, well, I mean, come on, I run a YouTube channel about board games and I have a bright yellow Suzuki Swift Sport. I think I've already crossed that threshold, you know, and it's the, uh, you know, the being single at 40 is never a good thought either. So it's, yeah, there's, I don't normally, I don't particularly like getting older, but that being said, it's going to be a nice week, you know, a few days away up in the Peak District with the family, and we're just going to hang out, we're going to do some activities that I fancy doing, you know, there's some zoos nearby, there's a, uh, a British car uh, museum or something like that, like old-fashioned British cars, I like cars, so it'd be good to look around that, but mainly it's just the fact that 12, 14 of us get to just sit around, spend some time together, and, uh, you know, I get to be surprised, you know, because uh, my sister-in-law is very good at arranging stuff on the fly, you know, she's very good, she will get you an order, you will obey her, <laughs> you will not, you will not dispute anything she says, but I'm expecting to get surprised by a few like, oh, we've done this for you, and you didn't expect it. It's like, you know, those will be very nice and pleasant. But yeah, it's just going to be a nice break. That being said, that does mean that content is going to be a bit sparse lately. I mean, I did the top 10 gateway games of less than five years old uh, recently, so by all means, check out that video. The amount of people who got confused by that title, thinking it was for kids younger than five... Have you not watched my channel at all and know my stance on kids? I don't play games with kids. I don't want my own kids. The last thing I'm going to be doing is a video with games suitable for children because I just would not be an expert on that sort of thing. No, this is games less than five years old for gateway games. You know, we're talking recent stuff, not the usual Splendor, Catan, and all that stuff. So hopefully check out that video. But it does mean that on top of this podcast, there's probably not going to be any more content this week. I mean, I thought, should I do some recordings yesterday and do it? But it's Easter weekend and I'd had such a hellish March. And I just thought, you know what? I just need a break. I just needed to zone out. And, you know, I played Stellaris all day on multiplayer with some mates on Friday. Saturday was a chill day. I sort of loaded up some extra PC games and uh, bought some new hardware. I've got... Um, I've got a new router coming because my last one broke. Uh, I've bought a new graphics card for my PC, so that should hopefully improve things on the uh, pro 
productivity front with regards to the uh, Premiere Pro, you know, video editing, but also it means that I can run games like Cyberpunk 2077 and a few others a bit better. In fact, my current card is good, it's a really good card, but it can't run Jedi Survivor because Jedi Survivor is so poorly optimized for the PC that my card just doesn't run it. So it's kind of annoying, I want to play that game. So I'm getting a new card, uh, I think a Super 4070 if you're a computer jargon, but uh, yeah, so you know, I look forward to that coming in the post and installing that probably when I get back. But yeah, it just, I just couldn't really get any more content done this week. So, you know, you're not going to see anything on the channel for a few days. Normal Surface will resume on Friday, Saturday when I'm back and can get back into the swing of things. So, you know, and then to be fair, I don't actually know what the next bit of content will be because... I probably do need to do another um, shelf by shelf keep or cull thing, so I probably will do one or two of those. But in terms of reviews, I'm actually kind of dry, surprisingly. <laughs> you know, because on my chart in the other room, I've literally got two things on it. Dominion app, which I don't even know if that's even worth doing a video for, because let's face it, I think that's been covered to death already. And uh, let's face it, you can try it out for free. Do you really need me to review the app when you can try it out for free? It's not like I'm helping you save money. But on top of that, I've also got to play the solo expansion to Wardering the Card Game. That will be a simple Beyond the Base Game video, probably. So that's literally it that's on the chart. There's nothing else. I need to ask my patrons for some more top 10 ideas, so that's going to be a thing. But I also, I'm like, well, what is there to review? Now, I do have some options. Iki is down there. I bought it. Re I bought it a while ago uh, to to essentially go right. Okay, I'm going to try this game out again because the first time I tried it, I enjoyed it, but the graphic errors, the rules errors, the board having an error in the rules put me off it, and we just sort. I sort of sold it. Now the expansion came out, and I thought, you know what? I'll buy Iki again. You know, it'll be um, you know a solid one on that front. In fact, maybe I should get it up on the screen just to illustrate for a few people, but. I just kind of thought, you know what, let's let's grab it again and see what's what. Now, the only thing is, I haven't had a chance to play it since that time. So <laughs> it's kind of a, proving to be a little bit of a problem in that sense. But I do need to hurry up and get it played. So at some point, I will do that. <laughs> I'm just being a little bit uh, distracted lately. So hopefully that's now on the screen. There, there we go. So basically, yeah, icky. People might recognize this one, the feudal Japan, hiring artisans, getting them to set up shops in the market and stuff. It's a cool game. It just had problems with its first edition. So I'm hoping the second edition will be better. Other than that, I mean, I could possibly do uh, Great Western Trail New Zealand. I could do a review for that one, maybe. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing else, really. <laughs> you know, I mean, every, there's not a lot of games that have come out, period, lately. And certainly not a lot of good ones. And I don't mean good ones as in I'm only going to review good games. That's another point. What I mean is that there's not really anything worth talking about. And you've only got to look at other channels to get an idea of this. I mean, look at the videos that Dice Tower has put up recently with some of the review videos. It's like... Okay, I've not even heard of 20 of these tiny little games. What are they? You know, the, the market dries up quite a bit in March, April time. And so it does give me a little bit of a break to do other types of content. And maybe I should just do some more Keep All Curls and the, the old top 10 every now and again. But I don't want to do too many top 10s in a month because I'm trying to get myself in a cycle where I can try and do one top 10 a month, you know, and space it out and actually get some top 10s done. But yeah, it's proving a little bit tricky to get into a routine with my life being somewhat chaotic at the best of times. But yeah, that being said, there will be normal service review um, resurfacing after I'm back from my 40th, assuming that I haven't dissolved into a giant puddle of uh, slime or something by then, because my body is just wittering away rapidly. You know, my wrists are in pain because they, I don't know, repetitive strain injury or, you know, too much work at the gym, I don't know, but my left wrist is sore a lot and physio doesn't seem to be helping it as much. So, you know, that's, like I say, the perils of getting older, I guess. But in terms of the channel, 23,000 subscribers that has now been breached. We're now up to there. So we're getting closer to the 25,000 mark. The next milestone, basically. Uh, the, as I said, the top 10 gateway games is up. 7,000 views. I'd like that to be higher, please. By all means, go and watch it. But, you know, 98% likes. That's good. So the majority of people like it. Yeah, the usual 
a couple of trolls, you know, turn up literally as the video goes up and goes dislike. I mean, seriously, have you got nothing better to do? But you know, with that being said, the Veil of Eternity review is doing pretty strong as well. 4,000, Septima, 3,500. You know, but those are the only recent content I've had. I mean, March 27th, March 20th, March 17th, March 12th. March was just so busy with work, I just didn't have time to do a lot of content, and there just wasn't a lot of material to do content with. So, yeah, we'll try and get some more stuff done in April, but just accept that this is a bit of a quiet period. I'm sure there's plenty of other content on the channel for you to watch and catch up on, so uh, by all means, do so if you can. That would be great. Um, I don't think, and I've also started doing shorts. Now, I don't know what people's opinion are on shorts. I'm not the biggest fan of them myself, I must admit, but sometimes I watch a few of them. But basically, I just felt like I wanted to talk about some other things other than games now and again. So I thought I'd just do these shorts where I don't really care if they get a lot of views or not, but it's just trailer reactions. And it's not me watching the trailer and then doing it at live thing. No, I'm not doing that. This is more kind of taking a little bit from the, well, not even nostalgia critic. A lot of people do this, but it's essentially if I've watched a movie or if I've watched a TV show to its completion or if I've seen a trailer, I'll just put up a one minute short on the YouTube channel just saying my thoughts on it. And it just gives me an opportunity to talk about TV and film because I like TV and film and therefore it's just an opportunity to do it without having to make a full blown video on the subject. So yeah, if you're interested in these particular ones, I did, was it, I had the House of the Dragon trailer and I've done the Alien Romulus trailer. So I've reacted to those. When I see trailers, I'll do other shorts. Um, when I watch shows to their completion, I mean, uh, Invincible finishes next week. I could do a little one-minute uh, reaction to the, to finishing that one. You know, there's, there's a few things that I could do, but it's just like a, a little thing on the side. It doesn't take a lot of time to do those, but it's just an opportunity to try something a little different. Right, <laughs> my trusty travel coffee mug, which is currently filled with chamomile tea, but, you know, needs must. Right, so let's get on with what I've done lately. Uh, lately, I've been involved with a convention lately. So yes, I haven't had time to do a lot of video content because I've gone to a mead festival. I have done a lot of work and I have visited mates in London and I've recently been to a convention. The convention being a local one that I go to called, where's the thing? There it is. Shake, Battle and Roll. And yes, if you're rolling your eyes thinking that that's a terrible title, not gonna lie, I think it's a terrible title as well. It used to be called StabCon South. It was related to another convention called StabCon in the North. I'm not sure if StabCon is a, <laughs> is a great name either. I think the word stab in your title is probably a little bit worried. Maybe that's why they, I think it's something they split apart or something and that's why they changed it to something different. But yeah, I'm not a fan of that title, I must admit. But title aside, it's a small convention. You know, it's nothing like massive and huge or anything. People get together and play a bunch of games. You know, they got a good community of people that help run it. You know, Tom, Stefan, Witter, Sam, Law, Jenny, Avis. I mean, they got quite a few, you know, happy faces on the door. Board Game Extras, if you know them as an online retailer, will set up shop there and sell a bunch of their games and their pieces and their sleeves. I mean, I always get top up some sleeves there. And it's just a free day convention in the hotel. And that's kind of it. I mean, it's like, HandyCon and a few of those others where you just get a hotel and play games, but just probably even a smaller scale than that. But that's not to say that it's, you know, that nothing happens. I mean, they have a decent library with a lot of games that you can play and you can certainly bring your own. A lot of people bring massive stuff. I mean, some people are playing massive long games of Twilight Imperium and, you know, Mosaic and stuff like that. And I ran two games of Hegemony. So, you know, certainly you can get the big games played, but you can also get the light fluffy stuff done as well. But let's say it's small scale and just nice. But the one reason I love going to this one is because this is Southampton. So it's only 30 minutes down the road. So firstly, I can travel to it straight from my house, which is quite handy. A 30 minute journey there, a 30 minute journey back is not a big deal. But also because my friends go to this one. You know, some, some people might visit from further afield, but for the most part, it's people that are local that I know from my uh, Southampton Games Club and the Portsmouth Games Club. Although not so much the Portsmouth Games Club now. I mean, they were there, but... I don't know. I go to my Southampton Games Club a lot more than my Portsmouth one at the moment. It's easier to... I work literally around the corner from the Southampton Games Club venue. It's like there's no excuse for me not to go on the Monday nights and on other nights when I meet up to try and get games played for review purposes. But the Portsmouth one's tricky because I've got to go in rush hour into Portsmouth, which takes a good 30 minutes to do just to get into Portsmouth. And it's, it's 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock, which is a weird time frame. 
and it's difficult to get into a game because everybody pre meditates their games in advance so when i go to southampton i say i'm going to bring this game and then when i get there people say oh, i'm interested in that can i join in and then i play the game like that but in Portsmouth, we've got quite a few little cliques that are formed. You've got a lot of groups that in the, on the side will arrange the game in advance. So you could turn up to the club and find there's no games because a lot of them have already been pre-arranged. And that's not the way I think a game club should be done. But, you know, so it puts me off wanting to go to it on a regular basis. Because what's the point in traveling 30 to 40 minutes to get to a venue only to find that the only games you're going to be playing is just one on the welcome table or something, you know, when you're trying to get your three hour you know, Euro game played or even just a midweight game played. You know, it's it's too much like playing roulette. Whereas on Monday, I know that if I bring some games along, somebody's going to want to play them. Or somebody might bring a game which I go, oh yeah, I fancy playing a bit of Ark Nova. Yeah, great. You know, there'll be something that I'm interested in playing and we'll be able to get the players at that time and be more inclusive and be more varied. Because, I mean, if you play with the same people every week, that just gets boring. You know, I like to mix it up a bit and play with different people. And so that, you know, that's my way of doing it. But, you know, that's slightly <laughs> digressing a little bit there. The convention itself, it runs twice a year. It's uh, end of March and usually end of September, usually around that point. Uh, I think it's about, yeah, end of September is the next one. Um, I don't think they've got the, I don't think they've got the uh, dates on the next one here because they've just got the March one, but I don't think they've mentioned the next one. Uh, maybe it's uh, upcoming events. Sheik Battle and Roll, six, that's March, five, three. Okay, so they haven't put it on there, but I'm pretty sure the next one's going to be like end of September. That's typically when it is. It's cheap. I think you pay you pay a small price, like 15 quid for the whole convention or something. And then if you want unlimited coffee from the machine and that, you can pay five pound a day. So that's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, the, the staff and the the facilities could be better. I mean, certainly, I mean, the food's not bad. It's a little expensive and, you know, they could certainly do with maintaining that coffee machine a bit more regularly than they normally do because it just ends up running out all the time or ends up a massive mess, you know. So I don't think they quite have grasped how game conventions should be ma maintained, but, yeah, well, that's, I've, to be honest, it's very rare I come across a hotel venue that gets board game conventions you know there's always you know handy con or you know state battle and roll or bay con or, you know pretty much every con that runs from a hotel there's always a problem with something to do with the hotel you know that's not perfect i think mean, i don't know grid con's not too bad the holiday i think it's the holiday inn in taunton that uh grid con runs from that's that's not too bad. I mean, they do discounts on drinks and they, you know, they have a good drink selection. The food's pretty decent. It's not too expensive. Yeah, actually, Gridcon would probably be the one example where I think the hotel facilities are actually pretty good. But yeah, other ones, you know, and this one is not particularly brilliant, but it's not a big deal. You can always go and order food. You can order food in or you can just go out for meals and that if you're desperate. But you know, the game convention itself, it's just nice, pleasant, and I get to see people. So by all means, if you're in this area in late March or early September, come and check it out. I got quite a few games played there. I mean, I was playing, uh, I said I ran two games of Hegemony. So, you know, that was a big thing. I ran a teaching game where people had to watch the video in advance. And then I taught on top of that uh, and also played a game of non-teaching. And, well, you know my thoughts on Hegemony. I love this game, so I had no qualms about playing this beauty. Oh, man, do I love this one. But, yeah, there was two good games. Uh, what did I play? I think I played the State in the Teachy game, and then I played the Working Class in the Non-Teachy game, and I won with both. But, you know, although the Working Class was a closer game, the State, the Teaching game, of course I was going to win. Of course I'm going to win a Teaching game of Hegemony. I know what I'm doing. But the non-teaching one was a bit more of a challenge and you know i was certainly fighting the state through supremacy but i was able to get quite a good lead at the end game uh with my prosperity being up high and managed to maintain the point lead despite the state getting all their end game and massive uh you know what do they call it the oh, i forget what they called the the markers that they rise that they got to keep in balance you know those things oh the, the legitimacy markers yes you know so they got a lot of points from there but yeah, they were good fun games. You know, good fun games of hegemony as always. Uh, what else did I did? I uh, played a very good game of Evenfall. Uh, my friend, you know, I, I've showed a couple of friends this game, and you can check out my review video for it. I think it's a great engine builder card game, and they loved it so much that they have bought a copy and they wanted to learn how to teach it. So I let them do that, 
and joined in their four player game of it and it was just a really solid you know solid game again you know i like this game the the artwork's really good the amount of combos that you can create you know the different engines you can run is really good we ran with the asymmetric factions which i'm in two minds about wanting to use uh i feel the game is a bit better if you just run with the basic setups but that being said using the asymmetric setups does gear you into a particular style of play and I would like to try some of the others, but it's also not too bad for new players to learn the game because if it gears you into combat, for example, then you know you need to do stuff to do with combat. But I probably would prefer to play the game where everybody's the same and then you generate your, um, your engine from scratch. That's the way I would prefer it, but it's not a bad game with the asymmetric factions. I just think it's not as good. But that was pretty good. I had a pretty decent win with the red one, the one who gets the power stones and uses them for cool effects. So I went very combat heavy. Yeah, that was a pretty um, uh, good one overall. Uh, what else did I play? Oh, Obsession. Yeah, good old Obsession. Uh, a friend of mine was uh, teaching that game to a couple of people, so I thought I'd join in. It was a f I needed something to do before Hegemony and the four-player game. It's quite long. I prefer to play the solo or with trusted people who know the game. But I thought, you know what? You know, I don't play games with this mate that often, and the other two were nice people. One of them was in the Hegemony game, actually. And I just figured, you know what, let's just do it. This turned out to be a good laugh. We only played a standard game, no expansions, and we played a rule wrong. Whoops. Um, we did the first player marker wrong, <laughs> which was uh, not a massive deal, but it certainly had that effect. But the biggest thing we did wrong was, I, you know, I was thinking, all right, are we going to finish this before I need to teach Hegemony? Hopefully we will. And then we were starting to get a little bit tight for time. And I thought, this standard game's going on a long time, even for a four player. What am I doing wrong? Oh, and then I realized that, um, yes, I made the classic mistake that I make all the time with this wretched game <laughs> sometimes. Basically, on this track up here, the, the round track, there's a very common mistake that is made with players where you have round one, round two, round three, and then it has a courtship phase where you go after the Fairchilds. Every time I keep forgetting that the courtship phase doesn't have actions in it. No, you play the actions for round one, two, and three like normal, and then in round four, which is typically meant to be the courtship phase, you resolve the courtship and that's it. So we played two or three of the courtship phases with full-on actions. That's another 8 to 12 turns in the game that should not have taken place. Whoops. Yep, it's a common mistake I keep making with this game. And I just, I was tired. It had been a while since I played it. I just totally forgot. But when I got suspicious, I looked up the rule and realized, ah, problem. So we just carried on and went, whatever. But it did mean that I had a bit of a tight window between that and my hegemony game. Thankfully, the others were running a little bit late as well. But still really enjoy this game prefer to play it solo but you know i'm looking forward to what the expansion will add maybe it will make it a bit more interactive or speed up who knows i'm curious what it will add you know i haven't really done a huge amount of research on it i pretty much just auto backed it because i figured it's going to be something i want and it was relatively cheap so you know i went with that uh what else was there i played uh do 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 i did hegemony even full uh well we did a tracarion game oh yeah that was a big one um you know my friend who, funny enough, was actually being taught. Even Fool loves this game. This is her favorite game. And to be honest, I'm not really going to dispute that because it is a solid game. <laughs> you know, it's a top 100 for me. It's This is our number one, though. And yeah, we had a good fun. We don't tend to play with Dalgard's Academy that much, the expansion, because it's just more rules. You know, it's already heavy enough as it is. We don't, as much as the expansion is decent, it's a lot of rules. This is already a complicated game. We don't need even more rules in it. But you know, we had good fun. Standard game, Dark Alley. Yeah, you got to have the Dark Alley board. And uh, yeah, it was just a good fun laugh. I mean, who was I playing? Um, I don't think I... Who did I play? I played the old oh, Optic Illusion dude or something. The one who basically gets to look at other people's action cards. And if they're special ones, I can copy the effect. That proved to be useful a couple of times during the game. It's a situational power, but it can be very good when it's used right. And yeah, just had a good fun with this one. I think I won it overall reasonably comfortably, but there was still, you know, touching times where it's like, oh, yep, falling behind a bit. Got to get back. It's a solid game. It's basically the prestige as in the movie, the board game. You know, it really is that personified. It's definitely Mind Clash's, I was about to say second best title. I have to say, I haven't played Anachrony in a while because that is a massive complicated mess at times, but I do like Anachrony a lot. 
Maybe over time to carry on could actually overtake it and be my favorite, but I think Anachrony still tops it so far, but they're definitely like my number one and number two for Mind Clash. As much as I've been giving them a little bit of shtick lately for their recent fare, like Perseverance was a bit of a dud for me, and um, Septima I gave a low rating to, you know, so as much as some of their games are falling a bit recently, oh yeah, Astra is not very good either, so yeah, they've had slip-ups lately, but they started off really, really solid. So, you know, I think it's just they need to find their footing again. To be fair, Stomar has the exact same problem. So <laughs> they started off great and now they're losing their way and now they need to find their footing again. So, you know, there is a, you know, kind of a correlation, I guess. But anything else I played that was particularly notable? Uh, I did play a game of Dune Imperium, uh, which I think I trounced everybody at. I mean, it's... Certainly got to do well at the combat to win at Dune Imperium, and, well, I just proved that that was the case yet again by winning at the combat. <laughs> you know, we played with all the expansions. It was the base set with the two expansions added on. G grabbed a few really good graft cards, uh, which certainly helped. But, yeah, I think the thing is, the expansions turned the Spacing Guild, which used to be a really rubbish guild that wasn't worth going into, into almost like a must-have guild. You know, previously you went Fremen. All the time. You always went Fremen. Fremen had the best cards, the best synergies, and it gave you loads of combat troops. But with the expansion, the new uh, board that lets you level up and then come back down for really cool bonuses suddenly makes the Spacing Guild worth it now. And so I went full-on Spacing Guild from the start and just did really well at the combat. I had those Fold Space cards. I was able to go to the uh, High Rider Space, you know, the one that gets you a bucket load of troops. Even grabbed a couple of uh, Forno Copters or whatever they're called, you know, cards that synergize with them. But... Yeah, it was just, it was a good fun game. I mean, I just, I, I, know, I like this game. I will play it with the expansions. I still think it's overrated and ugly, but it's still a game I'll play. I just wish I had a less boring power than, um, oh, what did I have? Uh, the one that, the guy who plays Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy, I had him, the Harkonnen dude, who's powerful, but he's so boring. He's like, he doesn't really have much fun in terms of his abilities. He's just a general powerful character. But sadly, the others I got in my, choice out of three were Paul Atreides, the wet fish, and somebody else who was just remotely boring as well. So it's like, well, I've got three boring characters, pick one. So I just picked the one that I hadn't played for a while. But, oh, here he is. Ah, I just had him. I had him. No, not the wet fish. Go away, wet fish. Where are you? I had you a second ago. Why can't I find you? There you are. Uh, Glassu, or whatever his name is, the beast, Rabin, yeah, Glassu Rabin, I don't know, I call him Drax, <laughs> so I don't, I'm not very good at my Dune lore, so, sue me, alright, you know, he was a, he was a tool in the movies, he's a tool in this game, whatever, so, yeah, yeah, I played him, and it was a good laugh, you know, but the game, again, drags on for ages, I mean, we played epic mode, it's supposed to be quick, it's supposed to be, like, similar amount of time in epic mode, it's not, epic mode takes longer, period, it just does, yeah, you know, why can't we just play the basic length? But, I will say, a good laugh nonetheless. And I think the last one I'll probably mention before I go on to the topic of the day is Earth. Uh, we played a five-player game of it, much against protest. <laughs> I mean, Earth is not a game I like to play with five. But we wanted to teach a new player, but four of us already knew how to play the game. So, it didn't slow it down dramatically. It still made it take longer than it should have done, but it wasn't quite as, like, you know like tear off my skin type levels of uh you know taking it ages and i think i came third it came third out of five and it wasn't far off i think there was only 12 points between first and third place but uh sadly i think i ended the game in a very inefficient way and made made it so that other people could do a lot when i couldn't do very much and i think that was how they were able to sort of peak me at the end i've made this mistake a couple of times you really do have to be careful about how you end the game because if you end the game and there's loads of turns after you and you can't plant anything they'll take advantage of that and so you know going i find that going for the seven points for finishing your tableau first is sometimes a bit of a trick, almost a bit of a red herring, because yes, it gets you seven points, but it can really hamper you in other ways, and so you need to be a little bit mindful, but still love this game, and I can't wait to have a look at the expansion, although they said they were going to send me the expansion as a sort of preview thing, but they haven't. You know, Paul Grogan's already done a bit on it, and so have some other channels, but I've not even seen a copy of the expansion yet. Hope they haven't forgotten, but 
you know, I'm hoping to get a uh, prototype version of the Abundance expansion to do a video on. As I said, I don't like doing Kickstarter videos 99.9% .9 of the time. I'm very picky with the ones I choose. This is an expansion to one of my top 10 games of all time. Of course, I want to look at this one. But, you know, I'm going to give my honest opinions one way or the other. Everybody knows how I roll. Oh, I like this. <laughs> I like this with the rhinos in the background. Uh, porcelain rhinos or something. But... Yeah, I still love Earth. It's still a fantastic game. You know, not for everybody. I get it, but it's just one I love. All right, let's take a swig of the tea. Mm. Ah, da, 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 da. Honestly, I wish Board Game Geek would actually put a variety of things on there. I hate looking at the Explore page on Board Game Geek because it's the exact same stuff. It's just the game night, and that's it. And that's all you see all over the advertising bits. You know, why not feature something a little bit more variety or just don't have them on the front page? I, like I say, I use Board Game Geek as a database. That is what it is. It's a database for me. I don't use it to watch other stuff. Um, and I go on forums and things like that. Anyway, yeah, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's talk about the premise of this. So I actually owe somebody for this one, actually. So if I've got the... Uh, I believe his name was... Oh, uh, I think it was Alistair Free Double Eight Two. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure he's got a proper name, but that's his YouTube username. Um, I did the video on my top ten regrets recently, and he comments a lot on my channel, which is really good. It's good to engage. But when I said I needed more ideas, he came up with a list of about twenty, twenty-five topic ideas, like a ridiculous amount of ideas that I could do for the podcast. Naturally, I'm going to ask the Patreons for this stuff in the near future as well. But you know what? I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to turn down good ideas when they come through. And I had to look through them and there was some good stuff in there. Some stuff I can't really do or some stuff that would be like, okay, this is probably a little bit beyond my capabilities. But there were a few in there that I liked the look of. And this is one of them. So, you know, credit for you for giving this idea. Table space. Yeah, so table space with games. Games lately are getting a little bit ridiculous when it comes to table space hogging for, like, the space they need on the table. Yeah, pretty much the name speaks for itself. But lately, when I've reviewed a bunch of games, you know, I mean, I did Septima, I've done, uh, well, not Veil of Eternity, but, you know, I've done that big stuff. Tainted Grail, Kings of Ruin is underneath this. It has taken up the entire table to get that one played. You know, it's a massive behemoth of trays and mats and stuff so the games these days are just getting a little bit ridiculous and it's a problem because I do think they should be trying to condense the space down a little bit because not everybody has a giant gaming table like the one I have here you know this is a luxury item that costs a bucket load of money so you can't expect everybody to have one of these and not everybody has a dining table that can house 12 people on it so you know, you need to be able to keep these onto relatively small tables, particularly for board game cafes. You know, board game cafes have some large tables, yes, but they're usually fought after because you're either doing big group games on them or you're doing the big Euros on them. But the small tables that game cafes have, you're not going to fit like Chukarion or Tated Grail or, you know, Septim or you know, any of these massive Euro games on there. Great Western Trail New Zealand, oh my word, have you seen how much room that takes up on the table? It's ridiculous, you know, the game's great and all, but man, the table space for that one is just insane. And so... I do wish that they would try to not make everything so gigantic. You know, there's got to be a way to condense it down. Unfortunately, there's not a lot I can do about it. It's something that publishers need to start doing a bit more. But what I can sort of talk about is a few little tips for how to manage the table space. Like if you do get a game like that, that can be a bit of a you know, behemoth, there are some ways that you can make stuff just a little bit more organized so that it's not quite such a massive problem. So, you know... First thing I'll probably mention is dead space. So dead space on boards, dead space on mats. Uh, you know, a great example is, uh, I don't know if I've got the photo. I'll see if I can find the photo, but I played Pursuit of Happiness recently. And Pursuit of Happiness is a game I love. You know, it's a really solid game, but it's got quite a lot of table space requirement because of all the cards. And I'm trying to find the photo, but I think it's because I haven't uploaded it to Google Photos yet. So give me a minute just to let that backup go for and maybe I can get it while I'm talking. But yeah, so Pursuit of Happiness has the board with all the spaces and it has all the card decks that you need nearby. And then you need your space with 
space for all the cards that you're going to play so it does require a lot of table space you yourself have to be pretty neat with where you put the cards in front of you so that's down to the individual players but one thing that came in handy was that i was using the the mat for this game so the uh, the play mat for it and did i take a picture of it i must have taken a picture of it surely doesn't seem to be showing up but oh no i haven't the videos haven't the photos haven't fully uploaded yet we'll get ah here we go right so come on show it show yourself show yourself to me <laughs> there we go so so this mat is quite big it is the play mat and it has all the spaces for the expansion content on there so it's already bigger than the normal board and you have to cover up a few things because i was only playing the base game because i was teaching three new players but the you know, we had to struggle to get the cards on the space that we had on this table, which is reasonably large, and trying to use not so many components on the board. But one thing that came in handy was this bit on the right here. You can notice is three rows that are dedicated to expansion content. Well, here is where I put the decks of cards. Don't put the decks of cards next to the rows where they go out like you normally would. Stick them on the dead space. All this whole section here was entirely dead space and not being used. So use it. Use it for something else. Put components on it. And that may sound like it's teaching your grandmother to sec eggs, but, you know, you'd be surprised how many people don't do this. And it just meant that I didn't have to have these wads of decks all over the rest of the table. So it, it managed to condense that down a little bit. Now, it still looks a bit messy from this photo, but then three new players are trying to arrange their tableaus, and, you know, you let them arrange their tableaus how they want. I mean, they're not particularly tidy with their resources and things, but, you know, that being said... You know, I was trying to be semi-tidy in front of me, but even I was getting a little bit messy, really. And yes, um, yes, uh, the fact that I've got uh, jewellery and drugs and stuff in front of me is, uh, you know, kind of insane. But, you know, this has the mini expansion uh, Thug's Life in there, which has all the nefarious cards in there. So, yes, stuff like uh, terrorism and drugs do appear as cards in this game in jokey form, but, you know, they were there. And I needed something that was going to give me some short-term happiness. I kind of needed it, so, uh, you know, I needed something at the time, and I just figured, well, I got a bit of money from my uh, um, dance choreography job, where I was basically joking that I do interpretive dance, and <laughs> just, I like, taught that to everybody, and suddenly ended up in the drug trade, it was kind of a little bit weird, but it's one reason I love this game, you tell such weird stories, but yeah, use the dead space on your board, you know, be prepared to use whatever space you can, just because it's on the board doesn't make it messy, obviously make sure it doesn't tip over and knock over pieces, but if you've got that space where there's a bit of artwork that isn't necessary, or, you know, a bit of, like, wasted space where it's like, ah, oh, we're not using that little mini expansion, we don't need it, or that is just literally a picture, but we are a bit tight for space, put stuff in that space, because it might as well be used for something functional, rather than just being a picture that takes up space on the board. All right, uh, another thing I would suggest is uh, probably go for certain components like, you know, find little accessories that will make it easier for you to manage the table space in some way. So I use a couple of accessories myself, and I'm going to showcase what they are here. One that always gets a lot of uh, uh, feedback from people is this one, the cupcake molds. So my friend brought me onto these ones and I bought like 24 for a fiver they're a bit more expensive now seven pound on Amazon but they're cupcake molds reusable silicone baking cases muffin molds 24 a pack of one is 24 of these things in multiple colors so you can differentiate these things are fantastic I use them in nearly every single game I play you know there's always a reason to store components and it could be for players to store their own stuff in front of them but it could just be for the normal stuff like i need to have gold stone wood and sheep or whatever as resources well i've got the tokens cupcake mold for each different colors so you can differentiate them stick the tokens in each and you just put them by the side of the board and it keeps everything nice and tidy or put them on the dead space like i mentioned before but these are so cheap you know people invest in these wooden bowls and various other really expensive methods and they're great but Sometimes you just need something a little bit cheaper. I mean, even those like little pop trays or whatever. I don't know if I can reach one from here. Uh, uh, I can't reach one from here, but you know, I've got ones that are used for dice trays, which I think are a bit of a, a bit of a space hog in themselves. But some people have the little popper ones where they're they're like a neoprene mat, but they pop at the corners and they can hold tokens in those. They're good, but they take up a bit of space themselves, you know. And you've got to put them all together. Here, you just literally 
take them out of the box, shove them on the table, and you're done. Just shove tokens in them. And if there's too many tokens for one, then use two of the same color, whatever. And then you can space them out across the table. You know, before I got my insert for Earth, this was one of the primary ways I was able to get Earth organized on the table because obviously that has a lot of components like the soil, the green cubes, the tree pieces, the canopy pieces. You know, there's quite a bit in there. Mm. Drink a bit more tea. But this isn't the only accessory. Another accessory, another little tip, hobby craft. Now, if you're in America, I don't know if you have hobby craft. Maybe you've got some equivalent um, over there. I'd be curious. But we have hobby craft in the UK. And it's basically a place you go for arts and crafts. So if you're an artist, if you do textiles and stuff like that, then it's fantastic. I don't do either of those two things. But they have a lot of storage boxes. And they come in all sorts of different sizes. So these are good for just home organization, especially if you haven't got an Ikea near you. But they do various tubs, and I particularly like these ones. I mean, they've got various sizes, and they do have, you know, some bigger ones, like, you know, 0.2 liter, 0.3 liter. You know, these ones that are a little bit, like, bigger, so a little bit taller. I quite like these little mini ones. They're 0.1 liter clear storage boxes, and you can get colored ones as well, but frankly, just get the clear ones. Uh, I think they're the same price, but they're just less. They, they You can see what's in them a bit easier. But these are great. Not the cheapest thing. £3.50 for three of them is not that cheap, uh, you know, it's especially if you want to get lots of them. But what you can do with these is you can either have them separate for, you know, using like, like I did with the silicone tubs. But what I've done in some games, before I got the hegemony insert, I was using a bunch of these various size cases and I used this in Earth as well. I was using them in the box. So you buy them, put the tokens in there, and then when you open up the game, you can just take the little tub out, take the lid off it, and you can store the tray on top of the lid so it doesn't. you don't have to chuck the lid back in the box or keep it somewhere else. It will literally go underneath the tray for st stability, and there you go. You've already got your components set up. You know, it's like an alternate way to doing a game insert. You know, you might have bagged up your cards. Well, now you can tub up your tokens, and you, they're already nicely laid out. So, not the cheapest thing in the world, but I've used these to good effect, and certainly a proper insert will replace these, which is why I've got a bunch of them as spares. But, you know, when I come across a game that I feel like, I could fit a couple of boxes in here, there's a decent amount of table space, and it would just save a little bit. If I've got any of these spare, I'll put them in and use them, and they do come in quite handy. I'm sure you've probably got some American equivalent if Hobbycraft doesn't exist, but, you know, look up one of these arts and crafts places. You might be quite surprised to see what kind of little storage things you can find to help just keep things tidy on the table. Uh, and probably the next tip I can think of, it might be the last one. I'll try to see if I can think of five. But the fourth one I'll mention is don't be afraid to use other space. And what do I mean by that? Well, you've got the table in front of you, so you have all that, but... If you've got spare chairs or a coffee table nearby or, you know, just something nearby that you can prop something on, don't be afraid to use it because it's there and it's out of the way. Yes, it is still taking up space, but it's only temporary. And we use chairs for this sort of matter. Like, I mean, I might sit around a, a table that's for six people. We're playing a four player game. There's two chairs. Well, okay, I'll put the boxes on the chair and the rule books can go on the chair or something else, you know, like a miniatures tray can go on the chair. So you don't have to have the miniatures tray or something on the table taking up space. You can just put it to the side and get what you need as then. Certainly it comes in handy for something like Deep Rock Galactic. You know, I've got the play mat on the table. Everybody's got their board and little pieces around and, you know, all the miniatures for the bugs and stuff. I don't leave them on the table unless the table's that big. You know, if it's a strap for space, I'll put the miniature trays elsewhere. I'll put them on the chair next to me. And then when people need a couple of grunts, I'll be like, right, okay, I'll just reach over. Do, 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 and they're here. You know, nice and easy. So, yeah, don't be afraid to use other space if it's available. It may be a case of, well, this is, table is too small for this game. Maybe, but then... If all you're using it for is just to put up trays of stuff that isn't that needed, you know, not that useful, then why not just put them somewhere else? You know, I certainly don't want the rule books on the table all the time. I want the rule books to be within reach, but they take up a lot of space because rule books tend to be quite large. So why waste table space on it? Yeah, that just kind of, you know, works out for me. One last tip. Yep, I have thought of a fifth one uh, pretty much now is don't be afraid to use the box, the box itself. 
because yes the box may take up a different um, a decent amount of space i mean be wary as to which box you use you know don't use the anachrony infinity box or the void full box on the table to store stuff because that's not going to work but if you've just got a normal ticket to ride size game or one of the smaller game boxes use that as a storage stain or don't be afraid to just leave stuff in the box and take stuff out of the box when you need it i do this for a couple of the garfield games uh uh, Scholars of the South Tigris is a good example, actually. The inserts for Garfield games have not been perfect, to say the least, but the one for Scholars is not that bad. And honestly, rather than having to scoop out all the... I mean, you've got to get the player pieces out. That's normal. But rather than scooping out all the different color meeples and then all the money and then all the different uh, you know, other little resources that you need, like gold and stuff, why not just leave them in their trays in the box? You could put the box nearby. It's not that huge but you could put it on the side of the table and then you simply just take it out of the box you don't have to scoop it all out and increase the setup time you know you don't even have to put them in cupcake molds and stuff like that you know you can just save yourself the bother by just going yep yeah, there's the board people have got their starting boards and uh, tokens and there's the box and we'll just take stuff out of it as and when people need it and then you know what people tend to do is that when they if they don't want to reach the box they usually make their own little mini banks near where their side of the table is and they can do that as the game progresses and then it makes it makes clear up a little bit quicker as well but it also makes the setup quicker but if you can fit the box on the table then that's not a bad way to not have lots of individual trays all over the place or lots of piles of tokens when you can just simply go yeah it's all in the box just leave it there and if it if you have to put that box on a chair nearby then so be it although that does mean that one person is going to have to be the person solely in charge of giving resources out which can be annoying trust me i've been in that position but you know this one's kind of a lesser tip but you know for some games it is actually easier just to leave the stuff in the box and just makes it a little bit quicker if your table is that small that you can't fit the box on the table then this tip's not really going to work as well but you might find that it just quickens things up by doing it so yeah not much else to say on that front and i'm probably going to wrap things up there because my uh, voice is going a little bit and i need to get on with uh packing for this week away but yeah if you've got any other tips that you want to throw in the comments for how you manage your table space that i haven't mentioned in these five then by all means put them down because i think it'll be a useful thing for people to just skim through and read i've come up with five reasons of my own if you can come up with another five between you as a community then by all means we'll have 10 good tips for managing table space but also let me know your thoughts on you know table space in general do you think that you know publishers are starting to get a little bit ridiculous with the amount of stuff that their games take up is it because of this trend that it's now big complex massive games are the thing now which means that publishers now have to make giant games otherwise people aren't interested in them and as a result you get table space problems you know do you reckon it's something to do with that or is it just a a, a random thing that's like oh yeah this is a thing we got to deal with every now and again but I do think that a lot of games are struggling to keep table space uh, thought of on like in the back of their head as like, oh yeah, we should probably think about how much space this takes up. Because I don't want to believe for a second, for example, that the people who made Set Teamer thought about table space. Because you've got the massive board, you've got your own player boards, and then you've got that stupid ritual board that has to go like perpendicular to the table board because you have to have the tracks going up but then you have to have the cards go underneath it as you know three separate piles so you've got this rectangular board and then you've got this other rectangle that you have to dart off to the side that takes up a load of space in itself it's like ergonomics wise septima is a very bad game to put on the table because if you try and put everything lined up nicely then somebody's going to have to do everything backwards or have like card decks in front of them which is really annoying so you know that's an example of how table space planning i don't think was thought about quite a bit there but i'll be interested to know your thoughts you know i don't need to know about games that have got horrible table space issues we already know there's a bunch of them you know let me know your tips and let me know how you would manage table space and whether you think that the trend is that it's a bit of a problem so that's it for me on this episode um, i'm gonna sign off now so thank you for listening uh next time i see you in a couple of weeks i'll be 40 so uh you know by all means hopefully things haven't changed too much when i finally breach that age but i'm going to enjoy the break so content will be a bit sparse but hopefully you've got enough to catch up on over the last few weeks and it means you can enjoy your easter break because i suspect a lot of people at the moment are probably enjoying their easter weekend with their families you know doing egg hunts or whatever you like to do at easter i don't really celebrate easter that much because it doesn't really mean that much to me but you know 
some of you probably take it quite seriously and do something with your kids by all means hope you're enjoying that and a lot of people take holiday off like i am at this period so they might be off on holidays you know they might have gone off or they're just taking a break themselves so i don't expect that many people are desperate for content this week so by all means enjoy your break check out the other content if you like and uh, i'll see you on the next one so that's it for me take care and remember as always it's only a game bye for now love you all and i'll see you very soon <laughs> oh boy I don't want to get old.